Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Something to Think About, an opportunity to ponder on what the Gospels tell us about Jesus and how it might influence and shape our own lives. Perhaps it doesn't come as a great shock to you, but Jesus and parts of the religious establishment of his day didn't really see eye to eye. In fact, in the Gospels, the accounts of Jesus' life, there are many instances where he and the members of this religious establishment had all sorts of discussions and arguments. Now, as someone who is completely part of a religious establishment, I'm a Methodist minister in the Methodist Church, funnily enough. I find myself a little nervous about what Jesus has to say about religion and religious establishments. But uh, before we jump to any conclusions, let's hear what goes on in our reading today, which is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 12, verses 38 to 44. As he taught, Jesus said, watch out for the teachers of the law. They like to walk around in flowing robes and be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and have the most important seats in the synagogues and the places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses and for a show make lengthy prayers. These men will be punished most severely. Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts, but a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins worth only a few pence. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, truly I tell you, this poor widow has put more money into the treasury than all the others. They gave out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in everything, all that she had to live on. In Jesus' day, the temple in Jerusalem was a really extraordinary, beautiful and extravagant affair built by Herod who was the ruler of that part of the world in that day. And he had a bit of a record for vanity projects that were primarily to make him look good. He had built all sorts of shrines, some even to gods outside the Jewish religious tradition, which didn't exactly endear him to many people, especially the traditionalists of the day. So bear that in mind for a moment, because here Jesus is criticizing the teachers of the law who seem to be in the religious business for their own ends, making themselves look good, feathering their own nest at the, the advantage of other people. Because they were teachers of the law, they had control over many aspects of the law of the, in the land, including laws about inheritances and who stood to benefit from the estate of people who had died. Now, in the Old Testament, the first half of the Bible, there is a great deal made out of how God was calling the people of Israel to look after the widow, the outcast, the foreigner, the orphans, and generally people who were at the bottom of the pecking order in society. Now, at the time of Jesus, much of this aspect of Old Testament teaching had been ignored or forgotten by a certain section of the religious, religious hierarchy. And they turned their position to their own advantages, making themselves look important in society and making judgments that were certainly not for the benefit of those who deserved it most. Jesus says in our reading that the teachers of the law devour widows' houses. In that religious tradition, officials would often decree that if a married man died, the house and all its contents would go to a male heir or another member of the family. In other words, on many occasions, widows would be made homeless 
the course of a decision taken by a teacher of the law, a complete disregard for those who were in need. In other words, certain sections of the religious establishment were self-serving and in it for their own benefits. Now, in the reading, we have a quick switch of a situation because at this point, Jesus and his disciples are now watching people put in donations into the temple treasury. After all, splendor and opulence and a building on that scale doesn't pay for itself. And so money was raised from people for its upkeep. Jesus, at this point, observes people putting in large sums of money, but highlights a widow who puts in two small copper coins, all that she had to live on, according to Jesus. Now look at the contrast. A magnificent, ornate, luxurious temple made for the worship of God, and also that enabled certain members of the religious orders to live out a life of luxury and comfort. Now compare this to the widow who has precious little, and what little she has, she gives away. Perhaps she has been made homeless by one of those teachers of the law who handed her house to another family member. The contrast couldn't be bigger and is a very sharp reminder that in God's economy, unless wealth and resources are actively used for the benefit of others, they are of no use or purpose. So the challenge for the church today and any religious organization is, how do we use the money that we work so hard to raise? And for us individuals, the challenge becomes a little bit more personal. How do I use the wealth and resources that have been entrusted to me for the benefit of others? It may not be money that we can share, because let's be honest, for a lot of people, there is not a lot of it around. But we may have time, energy, prayers and commitment that we can share with others. So the question for you this week. With what you have at your disposal. How can you make a difference in the life of, the other, of others? Because that is effectively what we are called to do. And Jesus simply reminded us that the business we're in is to love God and love our neighbours as ourselves. Thanks for watching and see you again next week.